Hi, everyone. I'm Annie. I'm a co-postdoc from Arizona State University. Uh, the topic that I'm going to talk about is a spatial analysis for vessel collision risk assessment. The reason we study the, uh, study the ship collision risk assessment is to improve the safety uh, of the shipping at sea so as to avoid the consequences of life, property, and environmental pollution caused by the trajectory, uh, tra uh, tragedy. Sorry. Um, in order to estimate the risk of vessel collision, vessel encounters are studied, which is an important intermediate phase in the collision events. The co closest point of approach, which is also called the CPA, between two encounter vessels is an important indicator to judge the degree of collision risk. The amount of vessel encounters can be used for risk assessment of vessel collision. When the distance of CPA is equal to zero, it means that the two encounter vessels have collided. When the distance of CPA is very small, but the two vessels have not collided, it can be considered that a near miss accident has occurred. Um, when the DCPA is um, neither uh, is less than a certain value, for example, uh, 0.5 nautical miles, although there may be neither a collision nor a near miss accident, it is still considered that there's a great risk of collision between vessels. So spatial analysis based on CPA was conducted. Um, the position of vessels where the distance of CPA is less than the threshold was identified and counted. Uh, the higher the density of a CPA is, the higher the risk will be. So by the quantitative spatial analysis, the ignored high con uh, collision risk area can be found. The result is helpful for support the planning and the rationalization of marine traffic, like to more optimize the organization of potential high-risk water area, so as so that to enlarge the DCPA between vessels to reduce the uh, collision risk. So the model we use is first to align the point data of the vessel trajectory with time by interpolation to align the location data into exactly the same time point so that to calculate the distance between vessels at the same time. And then find the lowest value of the distance between, uh, between the trajectory. And then it was taken at the CPA between two vessels. And then judge the, whether the distance of the CPA is less or equal to a threshold like 0.5 nautical mile, which is a very small distance to vessels. These CPA points can be taken as the potential risk points and then calculate the density of CPA to express the situation of the specific water area. Um, during the implementation, I met with a problem of compu uh, computation efficiency. So here is, I want to share in something here. Um, because the data of the whole states, the water area is, uh, is big data. For only, per, for only one day, there is around 20,000 vessels sailing on the water. So the frequency of the location data uh, is around um, one, po one point per minute. So there are around 1,440 minutes per day. This is a kind of data with uh, trajectory and time domain. So for each vessel, there are around uh, um, 100 points of locations in average. When I calculate the distance between two vessels in one day, it took around um, 17 hours for me to calculate. So for one month uh, data, it would take around 20 days. Uh, it is not very uh, doable for calculation. So I was thinking using a way to consume uh, memory to save time. To optimize the calculation efficiency, I found a way to loop around uh, the time point rather than the trajectories. And for each time point, using a matrix calculation to replace for loops, uh, it will cost, uh, cost the time some memory, but uh, it will uh, save the time uh, very, um, uh, it will save the time a lot. So finally, it only uh, cost 20 minutes for one day data calculation and 10 hours for a month calculation. So this is an uh, interesting experience that I want to share um, here. So uh, because this uh, optimization makes this calculation um, doable for implementation. And here I take the port of Los Angeles, for example. 
uh, this is the organization of the port where we can see uh, the separation zone here and uh, some precautionary area and anchorage area, et cetera. Uh, let's look at the CPA points of the area in each day. We can see there is some uh, CPA points inside of the port and uh, there is some uh, CPA points outside the port as well. Um, but when I accumulate uh, uh, the points uh, of the CPA points in the whole month, uh, it can be shown that uh, there are more points, CPA points within the port uh, and there is a, a little, uh, uh, there is some uh, CPA points outside of the ports. But it is not that uh, high risk within the port because we know uh, within the port, especially in the um, precautionary area, the ships might uh, have lower speed and they're under the monitoring of the, um, of the port. So it will not, that's a high risk. But outside of the area or port, those CPA points might need to pay more attention to um, because in this area, the speed of the ship might be higher and uh, it might be more um, uh, risk for us to, to notice. So here I extract uh, the area, the CPA points outside of the port area, and we can see there are two uh, density area. One is uh, in this area, which is between the port and uh, the Santa Catalina Island. And uh, this is uh, comes uh, a lot of uh, CPA points here, maybe because um, this is a kind of a back and forth water area without the set without a separation like here. Here is uh, there is a separation be uh, between the import and the export. Um, and in this area um, comes out the CPA point, maybe because there is the the sail the sailing trajectory here is not very regular, and we can see there is different kind of directions. Ship, uh, ships comes together. So uh, from the CPA uh, analysis, we can find some, uh, uh, um, some patterns of the ship sailing and find some uh, potential rates for us to uh, refer to. And this is the reference that I, I was uh, used when for the calculation. Um, yeah, thank you very much for uh, listening to my topic.